So let me ask you about your life. I look at your life. Your uncle is the president of the United States, Camelot. We all know so much about the presidency of your uncle, the short presidency of your uncle, and your father, the attorney general at the time. Uh, and then your father makes a run for president. And like his brother, he was assassinated. You have suggested that you believe there was a conspiracy within our government, intelligence agencies, more specifically, you mentioned the CIA, and that you even believe yourself today, because of your last name, I'm assuming, that your life could be in jeopardy. Why do you believe that they were involved in the assassination of both your, your dad and your uncle, and maybe that you may be a target? Oh, I haven't said that I may be a target. I mean, people have asked me if I, I mean, there's always for anybody who runs for president. Anybody who is on, on Fox is a target, but yeah, go ahead. So, you know, I, mean, I, I think I've taken a lot worse risks in my life than running for president. So I, I I'm, uh, but it's, but, but it's also got to be hard. You lost your uncle, you lost your father. I mean, that's horrible. Yeah, but what are you saying? Are you... No, so why do you think that our government could be involved in... Oh, well, you evidence? know, listen, when the Warren Commission, obviously, which was run by Alan Dulles, who was the head of the CIA, who my uncle fired, found that it was a lone shooter, which was Lee Harvey Oswald. But when Congress, a congressional committee, reinvestigated between 1977 and 1979 the House Select Assassinations Committee... They concluded, and, and they saw a lot more documentation and had a lot more witnesses than the Warren Commission ever saw. They concluded that my uncle was killed by a, a conspiracy. And the, most of the people, for example, Richard Schweitzer, who was the first the head of the committee, publicly said, uh, JFK, John, the President of the United States, was, that the CIA was involved in the murder of the President of the United States. And that's a quotation. Most of the people on that committee at that time believed it was the CIA, that it was believed certain pe people in the CIA. You were, you were seven at the time? Seven or eight? I was, uh, I was 10 when my uncle was ten killed. Was I was 14 when my father was killed. Oh, no. uh, um, you know, the, and today there is overwhelming evidence. I mean, in fact, why don't the it was, it was government just, needs to you know, release the, all of the files on it and let it let be transparent. Let us see the information. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. There's still, you know, the, the law requires, there, you know, there's a law that requires that all the records of John Kennedy's assassination be released to the public 10 years ago. So they're still holding 5,000 documents. President Biden promised when he was elected that he was going to release those documents. President Trump promised that he would. But the CIA doesn't want them to. And so the question that I think Americans have a right to ask, including members of, you know, my father and uncle's family, is why not? What is it that you don't want to see 60 years later? And by the way, the last... You know, the last... The last, tran the last tranche of documents released um, had documentation in there that finally got even the New York Times to admit that Lee Harvey Oswald was a CIA asset, that he was working for the CIA. So, um, and Ameri if the Warren Commission had known that back in, in you know, 1964, they would have had a very different time. And the House Assassinations Committee never knew that. Mm -hmm. That was released, um, you know, we've known that, that we've had documentation, that have known that at least a decade. But some of that documentation became overwhelming in this last tranche, and finally the mainstream media acknowledged that, yeah, he had this relationship with the CIA going back to 1957 or 1958. We, we have a, a minute left in, in this hour, and I want to ask you this. You, you, you're talking to the American people tonight. Why should they vote for you for president? Tell them, what, what, make I mean, in a one-minute final statement. Uh, I mean, the, you know, I'm running on a, um, on a I'm, I think most Americans were at our, each other's throats today. We have the worst polarization that we've ever had since the American Civil War. It's more dangerous and more toxic. Well, the 60s were a little crazy, too. I the mean, 60s were, there. yeah, when my father ran, it was, you know, there was a lot of uh, division at that time. But it's hard to say, see how this is ever going to 
and well. And what I've said is I want to end that polarization and I want to do that by telling the truth. That, that the way that we're going to do that, the first step we have to take is, is to tell the truth. Have somebody, have a president who's willing to tell the truth about everything. People, people in this country know that the system is rigged and they know that they're being lied to. And you, we need, you look at Donald Trump and all, like for, look, look at, for example, the way Hillary Clinton, top secret classified information, no, no prosecutor would ever prosecute, no raid at Chappaqua. You got four locations Joe Biden has, top secret classified information. They didn't raid his home. Donald Trump, they raid Mar-a-Lago. And then the question is, in the 2020 election, for example, the FBI had Hunter's laptop in December of 2019. They verified its authenticity in March of 2020. Why was the FBI in the months leading up to that election meeting with big tech companies and telling big tech companies that, uh, they may be victims of misinformation campaigns, and it may be about Joe or Hunter Biden when they knew damn well they'd already authenticated it. And, and what's interesting is the head of site integrity for Twitter at the time, Yoel Roth, actually testified in a, in a Missouri case that, in fact, they, that they said it might be about Hunter. And then none of these big tech companies allowed anybody to read the laptop story in the weeks leading up to that election. Now, to me... That is our government, in this case through the FBI, putting center blocks on a scale of an election. Is that something you would stop, and do you agree with me? Yeah, I would stop. In fact, I'm going to issue an executive order the moment I get into the White House, the first day, forbidding of ending the weaponization of our agencies for political purposes. And, um, It's, it's worse than it's ever been. In my, in my view, it's worse than it's ever been. And, you know, one party will be in power, and, and then they'll start doing it to the other party. And of it's course. going to be back and forth. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And this, you know, Judge Doty's decision, which I'm, my name is, you know, occurs on many, many, many pages. That Because I was the first person censored by the Biden White House. The Biden, Biden administration, uh, President Biden took the oath of office on January 21st, 2021. And the White House ordered Twitter to begin censoring me 37 hours later. I was the first name to be censored. And then three weeks after that, my Instagram account, which was my major way of talking to the public, was deplatformed and disappeared. Well, the, uh -oh. By the way, did you see at the censorship hearing? You got a great line when you said, I'm at a censorship hearing and you're censoring me. I mean, <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny.